Hello, peoples. I am here. By the way, do you like that good English? Hello, peoples. I'm here with my lovely assistant, my wife, Yanis. And about to have surgery, they're going to go in and go, and they're going to cut my neck right about here. They're going to take out this tumor, the same tumor that started it all back in June of 2014. They're going to do an excisional biopsy today. I'm here at the new Big W Hospital. It's shaped like a Big W. It's called the Clements Hospital. It's the same place I was at for my stem cell transplant, except they moved from the old St. Paul's to the new Clements. And everything here is shiny and glassy and brand new -y and all that kind of stuff. Looks nice. So we'll see how this goes. Supposed to be a day surgery. Go home this evening. Uh, slight chance I could be admitted, but doubtful. Feeling pretty good. Not really wanting to be here. If you want me to be honest, but you know how that goes. Okay, it's on, dude. It's on. Well, I'm on. They got the IV started and they've tortured me already really good and the anesthesiologist came in and flogged a bunch of information out of me and uh, just waiting now for the surgery to come. I guess somebody's going to come up and they're going to mark my neck real good. I'm ready to get this over with. As long as they mark the neck, can not your nose. <laughs> yeah, well, as long as they don't try to take it off my right hand or something, I guess I'll be okay. Getting ready to come take me to cut off my left leg and I asked do some surgery on your tongue <laughs> on my tongue they're going to cut I'm my teasing, tongue off I'm teasing. but uh, yeah but so I've been asking power. everybody if they take video back there I really doubt they will but I'm going to keep asking just in case you never know Dr. Sharma was just here and he's going to do a tongue act to me he's going to take out my tongue okay. to be nice and quiet so, <laughs> They're going to do the thing. He said about an hour and a half to two hours for the surgery. He said it just depends on how easily it wants to give up and come out. Uh, might stay overnight, might might not. Stay overnight, I may or may not. Hadn't had any anesthesia yet either, so I'm talking. Um, I asked him all about filming inside the OR. If I had maybe pursued this earlier, in the week, there might have been a very slim chance they could have done it, but here at the last moment, there's no way to jump the legal loopholes to get video. So, darn, I should have done that earlier. That would have been really cool. So, really, the next video should be when y'all see me waking up and all that good stuff, and Janice is having fun. She can ask me any question she wants, and I'd probably answer it honestly, right, hon? Because of anesthesia. She doesn't. She doesn't think I'm funny. She always says I'm not funny, but she's laughing right now. She's laughing. See, y'all hear? Y'all heard it? She's laughing. Is whatever means. Yeah. Whatever. Bye. So those of you who've had surgeries before and have been in hospitals, you know this this view right here. Yeah, this is called the "I'm still waiting for something to happen" view. And that's what I get to see. Oh boy, isn't it exciting? In this ultra modern flat screen TV one, type yeah. place. It is a big one. See, and there's, there's my surgical assistant right there. That's Janice. Hello. Um, hi, everybody. Hello, hello. You want me to video tonight, didn't you? I'm so nice. Everything is amazing. Yeah, everything is amazing. Okay. Um, how long did the surgery take? Well, it's about 8.30 right now. Okay. I guess I talked to the doctor maybe at 7 or so. They tried to go in take out my lungs and my heart and 
they found I didn't have a heart, so they couldn't take it out. My wife won't bring me any enchiladas. So they're starving me to death, beating me up, and being mean to me. That's my normal. Uh, the doctor said the lymph gland was, uh, I guess, a little bit stuck to the blood vessel, but he was able to take it out successfully with no complications. He tried to do a decapitation, but decided to let me keep my head. He wanted to remove my chest, heart, and lungs, but they couldn't find a heart. And so, it sounds like about a normal deal. Incisions maybe one or two inches long going from my base of my ear down the neck. They did not have to cut through any muscles there, which helps. And they're going to give me some dirty city water to drink. And uh, told me I couldn't go work in the yard for the next few weeks. And I've tried to have a sense of humor, but my wife doesn't think I'm funny. No, I don't. I think you're pitiful. Okay. She thinks I'm pitiful, but really, my name's Robert, not pitiful. I'm getting to make a break for freedom. There's my driver, my ride, my chef, my wife, and somebody who's sweet and puts up with me all the time. Okay, some of the time. The rest of the time she makes me behave. Janice and I are making a break for freedom. We have escaped the prison, and so far the police haven't detected that we're on the run. Yeah. Seemed like a pretty nice hospital with really nice people, and they do really mean things. But I guess it was a necessary evil. They told me that I can't be doing any sort of triathlon exercise, which breaks my heart because I love to do my 26.2 miles each day in my dreams. They unsuccessfully tried a decapitation as a way to... <laughs> None of this is going to be that funny when you watch it the next time. My wife says that... <laughs> sounds a little... That's probably the third time you said that. <laughs> Silly. My wife thinks that I'm not a very good comedian. I guess there's a good reason that I chose to be an RN instead of a comedian. But I tell you what, if I was a comedian, it'd be a heck of a weight loss I'd plan. Be starving. Because I'd be starving to death. It made you smile. Well, well, well. It is now Monday. I'm guessing the seventh, sixth or seventh. And I had the surgery on, what, Tuesday? 
on the 31st. Uh, first day after surgery was not real good. I was hurting pretty bad and rested a bit. Second day was the complete opposite. Felt great. Got up and stayed pretty busy all day. And since then, I've been staying busy most days. Putzing around a little bit, this and that, vacuuming, I don't know, light yard work, whatever. Just, you know, milling about mostly. Just kind of moving around, doing stuff. Barbecued a couple of times through some hot coals on the pit. And cooked up a little sausage and wrapped that in some tortillas. Yum. Overall doing well. Uh, the little thing they did here is still pretty tender, needless to say, and it's quite the knot. It's bigger than I thought it would be. A lot of bluing and bruising back up in here, but I guess some of that's just to be expected. A really nice Easter weekend. Got to make it to church, and that was really lifting. I needed that. Spent some time with uh, oldest daughter and son-in-law, and that was real good, and we had a nice Easter Sunday. Uh, Chauncey, the other daughter, was out of town. Um, so I had a real nice time. Last night, Sunday night, Easter Sunday night, about 8 o'clock, I just hear this yelping and screeching coming from Chauncey's bedroom, and it wouldn't stop. And it was obviously her little dog. She'd gotten a little rescue dog by the name of Zoe, Toy Poodle. And, you know, she comes running to me in a panic, and poor Zoe had jumped off the bed, off of Chauncey's bed onto the floor, you know, standard height, carpeted floor, whatever, and just broke her leg. I mean, flat out snapped it in half. And so I just held that poor little baby and got her to slow down for a minute and it was pretty obviously broken it was just dangling it, blah, it was pretty nasty so emergency vet visit they splinted and stabilized the leg pain meds some insets to reduce inflammation uh, you know, all the usual stuff and going back at 10 this morning and of course, you know, we're getting Chauncey's car, and it couldn't be enough to have a dog with a broken leg. And Chauncey's engine light comes on, and it seems like her tires are low on air. And then there was some other light that was blinking on her dashboard. It was, <laughs> were we even going to make it to the vet? So I gave her my 10 year old jalopy this morning so that she could get to work. And I'm going to take her car and take the dog to the vet. And then the dog and I are going to go sit over it and place and get her car looked at and some other stuff so there you have it overall life is going on it carries it carries on it's going forward and doing well um, i had a good question that was asked of me why did they go in and cut out this tumor at this point it's the lymph gland on the right side of my jaw that's where the cancer started this time and it really wasn't going down. All tests indicated it was free of cancer, but it was swollen. And every time I caught a little infection or didn't feel very good, it would just pop up real big. And the first thing we did was focus on it, asking, well, is it cancer? Is it cancer? Is it cancer? And finally, the oncologist and I said, considering how shallow this lymph gland is it would be relatively easy to go in there and kind of just jerk it out and close that chapter we don't have to worry any more about well is that lymph gland causing a problem is it still got cancer in it uh, you know running tests on it and I mean big expensive tests too and, you know we were talking about biopsying it on a regular basis and he said let's just do one big biopsy called an excisional biopsy and get that taken care of so that's what we did and that was the purpose last week. Uh, you know, recovery on the recovery side of things, just in a general sense, I'm still surprised at how little energy I have. I, I get up, you know, I started about two weeks ago maybe. Uh, as soon as the weather improved, started really 
pushing myself to get up and just stay busy, not in a exercise format like long walks, although I did do some of that and still continue to do some of that, but that's not my primary thing. My primary thing is I want to be able to get up and have a busy day. You know, just do laundry, clean around the house, do some yard work, uh, cook a little something. You know, just that, that kind of thing. Just more like daily activities and, and stay busy with that. Now, that's proven to be a challenge. It's uh, taken a lot out of me. And you know, I have moments where I can get up and work up to about two hours and doing stuff. And then that's it. Time to sit back down. So, uh, But that's an improvement. The first day that I was really trying to get up and go, I was doing about 30 minutes at a time. So, definite improvement, and I'm happy about that. My anticipated return to work date at this point is June 15th. All things considered, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make that goal. I don't seem to be moving as fast as I would like toward that. I talked with the transplant nurse, who's done this for a long time, and she and I had a good long heart-to-heart. And she said that it's anywhere from six months to a year and it's highly variable. And that it depends. She said some people will sit and work at a computer all day. So for them to sit on their couch versus going back to work and sitting at a computer is not as big a step. But what their trouble will be is focus and staying, staying awake and staying alert. And they'll get there and find that it's hard, but they just push through and they just kind of bring themselves up to speed and they're employer works with them, preferring to have a warm body there who can you know, contribute some and keep getting better. Me, I work 12 hours in a hospital ICU at nighttime. It's gonna have to, I'm going to have to get some stamina up. i got to be able to push for 12 hours. You know, not run hard or anything, but I've got to be able to put out some decent energy for a good 12-hour shift. And... Um, you know, just everybody heals differently. This is, you know, my second time to go through chemo. So I've had my bone marrow wiped twice. And um, honestly, I'm tired. But I don't know if that's a bad thing. It's just part of the deal. One of the more interesting little side effects is I've been dealing with a lot of chills. I'm talking deep to the bone cold just I just get I get cold and I just chill out and sometimes fever comes up a little bit to about a hundred a hundred point two but then it goes back down self-limiting last it's it's almost always in the evening somewhere between 5 p.m. and about 2 a.m. last couple hours I usually crawl up underneath some covers and I just shiver and shake for a while. And I guess that's my, my body having to relearn how to fight all these normal, common germs. It still blows my mind that when they did the stem cell transplant, they reset the bone marrow in the body's memory of infection to such a degree that I have to be re-immunized starting in November with all of my childhood vaccines. My body has no recollection of any sort of infection prior to now. So, in a way, I'm starting all over, and I guess that was kind of the whole point. Good news is things are going well overall. It's progress is a little slower than I would like, but it's steady. Um, don't know what else to say. I'm, I'm happy... Happy to um, be able to sit here and report to y'all. And I've got little Zoe here at my side, bless her heart. She's got her little uh, splint on here. I gave her some pain meds this morning. I can tell she's not feeling too good. Got her uh, a month ago. It was our youngest daughter, Chauncey. It was her 21st birthday. And Chauncey's a dog lover. Big time dog lover. 
we're, we kind of all are. I prefer a big dog. We've always had big dogs, or at least a medium, medium big dog. Never had a tiny one before, and we told Chance she could get a dog, and I, of course, voted for a yellow Labrador because that's what steals my heart. Chauncey voted for this dog, and since it was her birthday gift and whatnot, she got to choose. My requirements were I don't want a yippity dog. I don't want a dog that's going to sit around and just yip, 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 yip. And, and the, I want a dog that's sweet. That's, that's my two most basic requirements. They have to be sweet, and they can't be yippity. Now, a little barking's okay, but not just yip. Well, we got lucky. Oh, Zoe girl here, she's she a pretty good puppy. She's sweet as she can be, nice and quiet, mellow, about four years old. She's a rescue dog. She was a um, breeding dog. When we got her, she was emaciated, and she really didn't look all that healthy, if you want to know the truth. That's why I didn't do a whole bunch of pictures and stuff because she just didn't, I didn't think she looked very good. I'm not the, I can't say I'm the biggest fan of poodles overall, the way they look, but Zoe is, is winning my heart over. I mean, she's just a good dog. And bless her heart, we did not know that when you have a tiny, tiny dog like this, to jump off the couch is is a no-no. I mean, nobody told us that. We didn't know that she couldn't jump off the couch to a carpeted floor or from, you know, Chauncey's bed, which is about the same height as the couch. And last night she jumped off and you know, just going to get on the floor and it just snapped her little leg and we felt terrible. Just didn't have any idea that it could do that. I mean, she looks so she looks like a spring. I mean, you know, she looks like this bouncy, lively, light on her legs spring. And, you know, who would have thought that jumping that distance was going to result in all this? But, Zoe, you're very lucky to have gotten us. I tell you, dog. Very, very, very lucky. And we're glad to have you. So, that's that. Uh, the appointment with the vet is in 30 minutes. Now I'm going to have to start making a move to head that direction. And uh, I appreciate everybody's love and support, as always. I get tons of wonderful feedback. Uh, lots of great questions. Always kind of busy behind the scenes on Facebook Messenger, talking to various people. and. Uh, it's always touching, and one of these days I want to I want to share with y'all some thoughts. No real agenda, other than just to maybe ramble and just talk about some thoughts on inspiring others and being a hero. Because I get told that all the time. What an inspiration! You're such a hero. You're so brave, and you know, great. Thank you all. I and I don't mean to sound so flat when I say that I'm just a little tired but because it means a lot to me but at the same time I wonder what is a hero I mean what did I do to be a hero or to be so brave I just said I don't want to die you know how do I inspire others these videos started strictly as a means just to tell people what was going on rather than uh, you know, type everything out. I mean, typing is just fine, but I thought I would try videos this time. Just something, just something to do. So, uh, I'm very touched when I have some of these others who share how much they feel touched by what I'm doing, and and uh, so you know, bless you all. Remember that love is the most important thing. It's the number one commandment to love God, love others as self. That's a whole lot of loving going on, y'all. Yeah! And it's a good thing. It's a good thing. I'll leave you with a few images of the John 
Sims and Lindsay Tate wedding that Janice and I went to a couple of weekends ago. I think I mentioned in my last video that uh, John is terminal with Burkitt's lymphoma and he had uh, already proposed to Lindsay so they you know, fast forwarded the wedding and MD Anderson helped uh, give the location and basically the community of Houston, the awesome Big H town, came together and provided photographers, videographers, dress, cake, I mean everything. It just was thrown together. They got some news articles uh, on the news twice in that week and Janice and I went up there to celebrate with them their marriage. John is only the second Burkitt's lymphoma patient that I've ever met in my life. Uh, it, it's, you know, such a bittersweet thing. Such a bittersweet thing. It was a beautiful ceremony. Wonderful young couple. Um, you know, I certainly wish you all the best. And what, what do you say? Love every moment. No regrets. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait,